I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims to heaven for our weekly Bible study in English language. This is the fourth Sabbath school lesson study. God has been so gracious to us. He granted us the opportunity to study the fourth Sabbath school lesson study. Before uh, we begin the lesson study, I want to request each one of you to pray for me this uh, Saturday, that is April 22. I'm going to preach in the house of prayer. This is the Spicer Adventist University Church. There will be also live coverage on the Hope India channel YouTube. If you have time, please join us on the YouTube. If you are far away, if you are somewhere near Spicer, you can come and attend so that we can all be blessed together. This is going to be on Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Revelation chapter 17 and 18. We have also a small banner uh, for this one. So we will share it with you. Please pray for me so that God can use me. The title is Fast Fulfilling Signs of the Second Coming in Revelation chapter 17th and 18th, two chapters. Because for the last few weeks in Spicer Adventist University Church, that is House of Prayer, we are studying two, two chapters, Friday night, two chapters, Saturday during the divine service on the Sabbath, two chapters. This week, uh, they asked me to preach on these two chapters. So uphold me in your prayer. Let us pray so that uh, we can enter into the lesson study, the fourth lesson study. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for Jesus your son, because of his supreme sacrifice, we have the privilege to come to your throne of grace boldly. Thank you, Jesus, for this privilege. Lord, we want to thank you because of your son's supreme sacrifice. We have the salvation. Fill each one of us with your spirit so can, we can understand deeper implications of this Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, the first angel's message. Lord, we need your special blessing on each person and the family watching this message, this video, and also sharing with others. Bless them abundantly. Bless those young people who are upholding me and helping me to record and to edit and upload. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to take care of me for this humble ministry. Lead us with your Holy Spirit because we pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the lesson study, the fourth lesson study, the title is Fear God and Give Glory to Him. Fear God and Give Glory to Him. The memory text, often we call key text, the memory text is from Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, which is also very, very familiar passage to each one of us. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. This is very, very familiar to each one of us. That's why, what is this? Fear God, give glory to Him. L. Mark Finlay is quoting an illustration used by, in those days, Kierkegaard. That was an only illustration. He said, there was a, a big hall for entertainment. The hall was full of people. But suddenly, there was fire on that screen and behind. The clown of the town came up and told, there is fire, there is fire. Please, leave this building. Oh, everybody was clapping and saying, oh, what a nice introduction to the program today. Again, he appealed. But nobody paid any attention. They kept on clapping, saying, that's a nice introduction to the program which is to follow. Likewise, what is happening in the world? People could see the fire, according to that illustration. But they did not pay any notice. They did not pay any attention. They did not take any precaution. Likewise, each one of us, what is happening around us in the world, 
we see around, we hear the news, but we are not paying any attention about the ending of the end time, about the ending of this world. Jesus will come, everything what we have on this earth will be destroyed. After second coming, it will take a thousand years, that's what we call millennium. After second coming, there is going to be a thousand years of millennium, that means everything will be on this earth just destroyed. Everything on this earth will be covered with the darkness, no life, all the human beings and all the animals and all of that living beings on this earth will come to an end, that means they will die. And after thousand years, God is going to destroy the whole planet earth, everything what is in it, the bridges and the buildings and the what all man made on this earth for the last 6,000 years. Everything will melt. This is what we are told in the second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. That's why my brothers and sisters, after noticing terrible things happening, which we call signs of the second coming, we need to pay attention to what Bible says. We are told, fear God, fear God. My brothers and sisters, why should we fear God? Because Bible tells us clearly, God is a loving father. That is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. And also we are told, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. Why should we fear that loving God, loving father? This is the question which crops up in our mind. Why should we fear that? loving father. Instead, run to him, embrace him, fall on his lap or just hold his hand. That's what when we are small, we used to do with our daddy when he's coming home. When we hear the sound of his voice or that uh, those days they had cycle, when he's just coming and we used to run. I used to do that because I had eyesight up to age 10 and I used to run and meet daddy and maybe asking, what did you bring for me? Yes, that was the attitude of every child, every son and daughter. But there are times, all of us have little experience if you can look back when we are small, that when we did some naughty thing, when we did something bad, maybe fought with the children of the neighbor's home or scolded them or had some kind of a trouble or maybe broken some bottle because those days we had many bottles made out of glass. By chance, if you are uh, not careful, uh, the bottle can fall and break. And whenever we did such naughty things or something which we call bad. But when you are small, you don't think that is bad. But surely that is bad. Then when you did that bad thing, definitely that fear is there. Oh, daddy is coming home. He will ask me, why did you break this bottle? He is going to punish me. And he is going to ask me, why did you fight with the children of our neighbors? Or why did you fight with someone else? Or why did you not obey mummy? So he's going to ask and possibly he will punish. So we have fear. That day when we did such a naughty thing or some bad thing, we did not go and run and meet him. Probably hiding somewhere, maybe under the cot, maybe behind the door, somewhere in the other room, hiding. Did he do that also? But if somebody is a loving father, if you did not do anything wrong, then the tendency is we run to meet him. Likewise, why should we fear our loving father? Which means we have something wrong in us. We have done something wrong. We have done many things which are wrong. That's why 
we cannot face our heavenly father. We are not able to run and meet him. We have fear what he will say. Because whatever bad things what we are doing, he knows all. All of us know that. We cannot hide anything from God. Everything is open before him. Because when we hear, when we talk something bad, he hears us. That's what we are told in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. And also, whatever we do, God knows it. You read Psalm 139. When we stand up, he knows it. When we sit down, he knows it. He sees it. And also, whenever some thoughts come to us, and from far, he knows those bad thoughts also. Where can we go? If you are going to the east, he is there. If you are going to the sky, he is there. If you are going to the bottom of the sea, he is there. Psalm 139, 1 to 11. You read that one prayerfully. So we cannot hide from God whatever the bad things what we have done. That's why we need to fear God. We need to fear God. We also notice the Greek word, all of us know, John wrote book of Revelation in Greek language. All of us know all the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation is written in Greek language. So in Greek, if you read Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 and 7, specifically verse 7, it says, fear God, fear God. That is, the Greek word is phobia, phobia. But the word phobia is used the word phobia is used not in a negative sense. It can be translated reverence God. Sure, we honor our father, we respect our father. Likewise, we have to honor. Phobia is to honor God or to reverence God, to reverence God. But if we are doing things which are not good, then we have no option but to fear him. My brother, my sister, because Bible tells us, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned. None of us can say, I have no sin. All of us have sinned. Maybe some of our sins are open and some of our sins are hidden. People do not know. And when we come to the church, everybody looks like a saint. But our hidden life, our hidden sins, God knows all of that. That's why we have to fear. We have to fear. And not only fear, but we have to give glory to him. Because he's our father, he's our creator, he's our sustainer. Every day he takes care of our needs and also he's our redeemer. When we have fallen into sin, the human race, he came to this world and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary, because of which we have salvation. We can come to the throne of grace boldly, as we read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. We can come to the throne of grace boldly. As we know, Lucifer, who had that highest privilege to serve the Lord as anointed cherub in heavenly sanctuary, he did not submit himself to God. He did not submit himself to God. That's why we need to understand, fear God. The meaning is, we have to submit God. We have, sub, we have to submit ourselves to God in everything. In everything, we have to submit ourselves to God. Our finances, our abilities, and our work, our responsibilities, whatever you have. Everything we have to submit to God for his glory and honor. God is so good to each one of us. He is loving us in spite of our sinfulness. He loves us. Romans chapter 5 verses 8 onwards. If you read, it says that while we are still sinners, Jesus died for us. Jesus died in order to wash our sins, remove that wickedness, remove that sinfulness 
in our lives. There is also another aspect which we need to understand. Fearing and obeying has intimate relationship. It is like the two sides of the same coin. Which side of the coin is more important? We cannot say this side is important. Both sides are important. Likewise, fearing God and obeying God. When we say obeying God, we have to obey what God says. That is what we say the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 2, we read. And also we notice the same thought in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 and 14. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of human beings. This is the whole duty. That is why we need to fear God and keep his commandments, which means we have to submit ourselves and keep his commandments, which means we have to practice his commandments in each day of our life, not only once in a week when we go to church. Most of us may say, I want to be good and nice today because today is the day of worship. But other days, it looks as though one day we are saint, six days of the week we are sinner. My brother, my sister, what is your experience? He wants us to be his sons and daughters, to live a holy life, a life which will bring glory and honor to God every day of the week. This is what we call 24-7. That's why there is so much of intimate connection between fearing God and keeping his commandments. This is what God is expecting. Though he says, keep my commandments, as we noticed in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 2, and also Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, but we are not saved by good works. All of us have to recognize that we are not saved by good works. Our salvation is because of the grace of Jesus. We read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. We are saved by His grace through faith. On our part, we have to have that faith in Jesus so that we will be saved. God's grace is open to all, but our humble responsibility as a human being, as a man, as a woman, to have faith in Jesus as our Savior who died on our behalf on the cross of Calvary, that cruel death. But since we have the salvation free by His grace through faith, we cannot say, oh, I can do anything and everything. Not at all. We are told clearly, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, we are ordained or we are made to do good works. As the sons and daughters of Jesus, we have to show in our day-to-day -day life to do good works so that others can see and say, oh, this person is a son of Jesus. This person is a daughter of Jesus truly. Because people cannot see what is in our heart and mind. People only can see what we do, our words and our actions. That's why... We have to do those good works to bring glory and honor to God. Not that by doing good works we can buy salvation. We cannot buy salvation. Salvation is a free gift of God. That's why. But we are expected, God expects from each one of us good works. That's why. How can we do good works? By obeying God and keeping his commandments. That's why Jesus said when he was on this earth, if you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. Do you love Jesus? Yes, all of us will say, yes, I love the Lord because he loved me first and he died for me and he shed his precious blood. That's what we say. This is also recorded in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 onwards. But in order to show our love to Jesus, we have to keep his commandments. That's what is John chapter 14 verse 15. If we simply say with our lips, saying, I love the Lord, that is not enough. Anybody can say that. That love which we have for Jesus should be seen in our words, in our actions. 
That's why if we follow Jesus, if we follow what he says, which is recorded in the Bible, then we can live as the true sons and daughters of Jesus, bringing glory and honor to God. That's why in our life, we must make Jesus as the center of our life. Jesus should be the center of our life in every aspect, spiritual life as well as physical life. Jesus should be the center. All of us know we live in a world of consumerism. The world is so much self-centered. Often we cannot escape this also. We also are living such a self-centered life. What is that self-centered life? What is that consumerism? He says, I want everything. I want everything. I want the best. Suppose if you are there as a group, if there is something which you have to pick up, we want to be the first to take it. Whether it is food, whether it is something which is there to take, we want to be the first. Often, suppose if it is a food, if it is self-service or uh, something like a buffet system where you have to serve yourself, then what do we do as human beings? Often, most of us do that. We take more food than what we can eat because we want more. We want everything. And we know we cannot finish all of that. We cannot eat. But still, we take it. Then what do we do later? We may finish half of it. Rest of it we are just throwing. And sometimes if you notice carefully, some people who are coming in the last minute, who are in the last few people in the line, in that queue, they may not get much food because most of the good items are over. Because somebody out of selfishness has taken more and wasted it. Likewise, as we are living in this ending of the end time, let us not do like the people of the world, only struggling, working, and also gathering more money and also more apartments if possible and more vehicles, maybe changing vehicles often whenever some new model of vehicle, some car or bike comes into the market. Sure, because people want to maintain their status and say, oh, I must have the new vehicle. I must have this latest equipment, latest mobile phone. Yes, we all do that. But as we are realizing, we are coming to the ending of the end time. Our focus must be on Jesus and preparation to go to heaven. Our focus must be preparing to meet the Lord in the midair within a short time. So what we must do, instead of focusing on things of this earth, instead of focusing what we can eat, what we can wear, what we can have in our house, or instead of thinking what post I can occupy, how long I can occupy that post as much as possible. That's what some of us do, isn't it? We don't want to leave that responsibility. We want to go on forever and ever if possible. But we need to learn this important spiritual lesson which Jesus taught us. Matthew 6, verse 33, we read, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. What all we need on this earth, our clothing, our shelter, our daily food and water, all of the necessities of life, God will supply in his own loving kindness, in his own riches. That's what we read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. He will supply all of our needs when, when we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then all the worldly things, what we need, he knows that my son needs this, my daughter needs this, his family needs this. God will supply it in his time. 
And also we are told Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Notice Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. We have to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When we look at Jesus and continue our life journey on this earth, surely we will be successful. We will reach that goal of our life. The purpose of our life is not only just to live on this earth, but to prepare ourselves to go to heaven, to have that everlasting life, eternal life. That's why we must have the mind like Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, we read, let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus. What was the mind of Jesus when he was on this earth? This is for the salvation of every sinner. Do you also think of others and the salvation of others? Do you do something for that? And also, when Jesus went back to heaven, after that death and resurrection and ascension on this earth, when he went back to heaven, he is still working as our mediator, as our high priest for our salvation. My brother, my sister, what do you do for the salvation of others? Each day, can you think of each day, what I have done today to tell somebody about Jesus, somebody about his salvation, somebody about his soon return to this earth to take us home. Did you tell anyone? We have so many opportunities. You can share it on WhatsApp or maybe Facebook, whatever the social media you are using. Or just you can tell your colleague at work. You can tell something to somebody, your neighbor. We need to say something. Let us not go to bed that day. Let us not sleep that day without telling somebody about Jesus and his soon return. If we can do that, we can touch the lives of so many people. Just that little witnessing, that will bring eternal life to the people. Just that little witnessing, little sharing of that truth will bring eternal life. They can make a decision for eternal life. What is giving glory to God? What is that giving glory to God? Because God is surrounded by his glory. That's what we read in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. It's like a stream of fire or a river of fire flowing in front of him. That is a human expression of Daniel to describe the glory of God. God is surrounded by the glory. That's why we also read in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, the angels who are there at the throne of God, those covering cherubs or the angels who are standing there, which we call cherubs or cherubim. They're covering their face with two wings, covering their feet with two wings and flying with two wings. Each one has six wings. wings. They're not able to see even the glory of God, even in heaven. That much glory he has. But as human beings, how can we give glory to him? We read in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, part of the first angel's message. Fear God, then give glory to him. Why should we give glory to him? Because the hour of judgment has come. The hour of judgment has come. Because we are in the time of judgment. This is what we call investigative judgment or pre-advent judgment pre-advent judgment. That's why since we have this important message, the urgent message for the entire world, including each one of us, we need to show in our lives a life which is bringing glory and honor to God, which brings honor to our creator and our sustainer and our redeemer. That is Jesus Christ. That's why we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. That our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That means Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of God. If we destroy this temple, 
God will destroy us. But what are we doing with our body? Which means what we eat is important, what we drink is important. We can give glory to God in what we drink and what we eat. This is what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether you eat or drink and do anything, do it for the glory of God. How can a drunkard bring glory to God by drinking alcohol and uh, falling on the roadside? Or how can an, a person who takes drugs and commits all kinds of terrible things for his family and for himself, how can he bring glory to God? That person cannot bring. That's why what we eat is important. We should eat only what Bible permits us. What we can eat, why, what we cannot eat, we can read that in Leviticus chapter 11. And also, what we can drink, what we cannot drink, we also read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, which says, drunkards will not enter into God's kingdom. That's why, yes, certain substances we should not eat or drink or smoke because the drinking, alcohol, smoking destroys our body because our body is the temple of Holy Ghost. That's why we have to maintain it to bring glory and honor to God. Along with that, our dress is also important. What kind of dress we wear? Is it something, a modern dress? Of course, nothing sinful about the modern dress, but some dress, instead of bringing glory to God, it is only bringing grief to God because we are not dressing ourselves as the sons and daughters of God. Instead, we are dressing like the sons and daughters of the world, sons and daughters of Satan. That's why even our dress, we should be very cautious what kind of dress we wear. So what we drink, what we eat, what we dress, how our life is, everything brings glory to God. That's why we have to be cautious with those things. Sometimes people are very, very good and religious and they have so much interest in the Bible, but the type of programs they watch on their phone, on their TV is very, very bad because those programs are not anything which can bring them closer to God rather push them far away from God because some of those are satanic programs or some of that music what people listen to is a satanic music. That is not bringing glory and honor to God. That's why what we eat, what we drink, what we wear, what we watch is also important. And also what we listen, what we hear is also important. That's why my brother, my sister, what do you watch when nobody's around? What type of music do you listen to? Also brings either glory to God or grief to Jesus. That's why do we bring glory to God or grief to Jesus? We read in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. That means our life is like a living sacrifice to bring glory and honor to God. That's why we need to make some modifications in what we watch, what we hear, that means what we listen, the music or some type of uh, bad news or uh, some things about uh, rumors or what we eat, what we drink. Everything has impact on our relationship with God to bring glory and honor to God. Book of Revelation is a book which tells us to overcome. We can overcome. That's what is our key text or the memory text also tells. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 that here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. That's why by keeping the commandments of God and having the faith of Jesus, we can overcome. With the power of Jesus, 
we can overcome sin, we can overcome temptation, we can overcome Satan. That's what Jesus did when Jesus was on this earth. Satan directly tempted him to push him into sin. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 10. But Jesus overcame temptation and sin and the tempter, Satan, he overcame by the scriptures. Likewise, each time Jesus quoted, it is written, which means our strength to overcome sin, our strength to overcome any temptation is the Bible, is the Bible. And also, when we are weak at some temptation, some sin, surely Jesus is willing to give us strength. Jesus is willing to help us, saying, my son, my daughter, I am here. As still we can remember, when we are small, then our father lifted us, if there is some uh, water there, or maybe a small stream which you have to cross, and the father lifted us. Or if there is some dirt, father lifted us, so that we will not get into that mess. We will not fall into that mess. Likewise, Jesus can assist us. He is our heavenly father. So, he can give us strength. He can lift us away or far away from that temptation and sin and whatever the mess. And also we read in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the seven churches, the seven churches. In each church, you read prayerfully these two chapters, Revelation chapter 2 and 3. At the end of each church, what does it say? Those who overcome, if you overcome, for example, the first church, Ephesus, he will give them to eat from the fruit of the tree of life. The second church, Smyrna, he says, if you overcome, I'll give you the crown of life. And the third church, he says, I'll give you, if you overcome, I'll give you hidden manna. So each church I want you to read, at the end of each church description, it says the overcomer will be given. For example, the last church, Laodicea. He says, if you overcome, he will give us the privilege to sit on the throne with God. What a privilege. That's why we can overcome by the power of Jesus. We can overcome temptation, sin, and Satan with the help of Jesus. He's always willing, 24-7, he's always willing to help each one of us. When we say, oh, my heavenly father, my redeemer, please help me in this temptation, in this sin, so that I should not fall into this temptation and sin. Please help me. Lord, my strength is not enough to face devil. Please give me your power. He will grant his grace and his power to overcome temptation, sin, and Satan, so that we will be victorious for Jesus, as the son of Jesus, as the daughter of Jesus. That's why fear God, and give glory to him. May the Lord bless each one of us so that we can bring glory and honor to God by obeying him, obeying his commandments, and obeying each instruction which God has given to each one of us in the Bible. May the Lord bless each one of us so that we may live as his worthy and loyal sons and daughters of Jesus. If that is your decision today, my brother, my sister in Christ, I want to conclude this lesson study with a word of prayer. And I want to request each one of you to share this link, to share this video with others, and also to introduce our YouTube, Professor Sharad Babu, so that others also can have the joy of watching these messages and also sharing with their friends. But most of you are doing faithfully sharing this link and sharing this video with others. 
God will bless you abundantly. Continue to uphold me and the team of young people who are here in Spicer who are assisting me. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for Jesus and his supreme sacrifice. Because of Jesus, we have this privilege. Help each one of us to give reverence to you and to fear you in everything so that we can bring glory and honor to you. Lord, you want each one of us to live as your faithful sons and daughters to bring glory and honor to you. Help each one of us. Give us strength and give us your power so that we can overcome temptation, sin, and Satan. Lord, we can be victorious with your help because we can overcome Satan with your power, with your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Bless each person who is watching and also sharing with others. And continue to uphold me to continue this humble ministry. Thank you, Jesus, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, continue to uphold me this weekend so that I can preach in the house of prayer that is in Spicer Adventist University Church. Time will be approximately around 11.45 by the time I start preaching. They have all the other things in the divine service, but... You can watch all of that one. But I don't want any one of you to miss your local church. You attend your local church regularly, faithfully. Then afternoon when you have some free time, you can still watch that message on the Hope India channel YouTube. Thank you. God be with you. If it is God's will, we will meet you again in the fifth lesson next week. God bless you.